May we all rise for an Andrew Southern family, please. I am the resurrection and the life. Say it, the Lord. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth on me shall never truly die. Shall any plague 
you come now, my dwelling. For you shall give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall I trample under feet. Because you have set your love upon me, says the Most High. Therefore will I deliver you. I will set you on high. Because you have known my name. You shall call upon me. And I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation, says the Most High. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, the Most High. Even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him. Else, if the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by rejoicing which I have in Christ. Yeshua, our Lord and risen Savior. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, says the Apostle Paul, what advantage it, it is if the dead rise not? So let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to, sh to their shame. We shall rise in glory. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? With what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not. That body that shall be. But bare grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But Yahweh, Yeshua, the Most High giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And to every seed his own body. 
All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men. Another flesh of beasts. Another of fishes. And another of birds. There are also celestial bodies. And bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, and how be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. But this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, 
they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of my Creator forevermore. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. 
I will sing praise to the Most High while I have my very being. Oh, praise ye the Lord. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless you, the Lord, O oh, my soul. Praise you, the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Yea, 
He gave good heed and sought out and sought in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was of right, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goyah and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. But this is the whole duty of man. For God, Yahweh, shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. destruction, 
who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so my creator, Yah, pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field. So he flourisheth, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless you the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Glory. How manifold are the works in wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers of flesh. Thanks, for that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it, Selah. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. And to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But Yahweh, Jehovah, the Almighty, is the judge. He putteth down one, and he setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Most High. Savior out there. Freedom to worship and bow down to Yahuwah. Yeah, I'm talking to Brother Fletcher. Freedom to worship. 
Good morning. I'm gonna ask everybody to please take a seat. So as you all are getting situated and before we start the program, I'm gonna ask everyone to please take a moment to turn off your cell phones. Go ahead and do that, please. And if you do need to take a call and you choose to leave your phone on silent, please take your phone call outside the sanctuary. Thank you. So we are going to go ahead and get this program started this morning with a scripture and a prayer. And we're gonna bring up Dr. Aaron L. Vance Jr. to do those things. It's like we have some church folks here. So I'm going to say praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We come to give praise to the Most High in life or in someone's passing. Let us pray at this time. We'll do five seconds or ten seconds just to have an acknowledgement of the loved ones that we have lost in our families. Please bow your head and let's have a moment of silence. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Holy Spirit, we come before your throne of grace with thanksgiving. You are the author and finisher of our faith. Without you, nothing can be done. You can't move. You can't live. You can't have your very being. Only you make that possible by the word of the Most High's power. So we thank you for being our rock, our shield, our buckler, our very present help in the time of need. And we even come on this day to celebrate you because we know that our sister Dorothy Vance, her living was not in vain, nor her passing on into eternity. So we thank you for that. And we say hallelujah, we give you the highest praise. And we bind all spirits that are negative, that come to do evil, we bind you, the blood of Yah, way prevails. And we say thank you for giving us the power to bind what is not like you, removing all evil that is not like you, and letting the manifestation of the glory of the Most High shine in into our hearts by way of your precious spirit and precious anointing. So we say thank you for this day that you've given us. Yes, it's the time to mourn. It's also a time to rejoice because you made us for this time, and we weren't meant to be here forever in these corruptible bodies. Should Christ come, hallelujah. But we know should you not, 
and we pass, we're in your hands as long as we're right with you. So we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Yahweh's name. Now everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. says they remember that God was their rock give ear O my people to my law incline your ears to the words of my mouth I will open my mouth in a parable I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us the blood of Yah prevails Amen. Now we will have a song by Loretha Keel, and following we will have acknowledgments and condolences by Darlene Vance and Chalice Simmons. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and lift up our God. Lift him up, lift him up. We're here to celebrate the life of Dorothy Vance, who is the firstborn of Amelia Vance and Aaron Vance, Sr., and I invoke your prayers this morning. I was requested to sing a song that I just learned, so just lift me up today. Let's lift each other up, okay? Because my sister lived life, our sister, cousin, her way, and no other way. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The room grew still as she made a way to the master. She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger. Her folks whisper, there's no place here for your kind. Still on she came through the pain that flushed her face. Until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, every word she said heard as she poured her love for her master through her box of alabaster. I come to pour my praise on him like oil from Dorothy's alabaster box. Don't give in to anger when it comes to your pain cause she's still here with us I know so don't give in to the negativity just feel what you feel and let it be positive cause you don't know the pain that Dorothy went through. You don't know the steps that she walked in. You don't know Dorothy's story because she poured it from her alabaster box. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to have Darlene Vance and Shirley Simmons come up for acknowledgments and condolences.
This is a hard pill to swallow right now. My auntie was the sweetest, no matter what she did and what she done. She loved her family, no matter what. She had seen me kiss me all over my face, and I run in the bathroom <laughs> and wash my face because her lips be so wet. <laughs> <clears throat> Growing up, Auntie made sure I had. She bought a lot of my Easter clothes. <clears throat> and every time she see me, and I talked to her on the phone in Florida as well when I was living in Florida. And every time she see me and I go get my hair done, ooh, niece, I want my hair just like yours. I say, Auntie, you, you, your hair is very thin, y'all. <laughs> you know, you can't get my hair. Why I can't? She can add some tracks in there. <laughs> I say, no, nah, Auntie, just get your own hair done. But I'm truly, truly going to miss her. My Auntie was the best. I don't care what nobody say. She was the best and was, oh, always give. She would give her nieces and nephews slab money in their pocket. And I'm like, Auntie, I don't want your money. She said, yes, you do. You look like you're broke. <laughs> 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 and she, uh, uh, here, Lisa, what, what did she call me? Leaky? Leaky. Leaky or something. And I'm like, Auntie, I don't leak. I'm grown now. I don't, I don't urinate on myself anymore. <laughs> I'm not a baby anymore. But besides all that, she just was a wonderful person. And she was very, very strong. God brought me home for a reason. I was gone 17 years, but I did not expect to come home to this. And when I see my auntie, I knew. And I held all the tears back when I hugged her, kissed her. When I went in my truck, I sat in the driveway, and I just sat there and cried. I didn't want to cry in front of her. So I'm truly, truly going to miss her. Like I said, I was gone 17 years, you know, just like when my grandmother, I was gone. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm home so I can be here with my family, and I love all of you. I don't have no pics, no none of that. I love all of you, and I just want y'all to know that. And I love my dad. God brought me home for you too, Daddy. So that's all I got to say, and I love you, Auntie, and I'm going to miss you. Well, hello, everybody. Family. This is what I love to see, friends and family. Well, um, Dorothy was my best friend. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Me and her was a little duo together. We walked together, we talked together, we sang together. From Arkansas to Detroit, always together. Then it becomes a came from times so where we weren't together when I moved from Detroit. But I came looking for my sister, and I found her. And I thank God that we made men's before she passed. Not everybody make men's with their family before they leave here. And I have that heart to make men's. And I asked her, I said, sis, you no, know, I told her. I said, sis, if I've ever done anything to you wrong, forgive me. And she looked at me, and she said, <clears throat> excuse me. I forgive you, and you forgive me as well. Now, that's something that makes me feel so good, knowing she didn't leave here without us binding together. And I, I'm a lover now. I'm a lover in heaven. I know I'm going to see her again. So I'm not going to let all these tears go to waste because God's going to still carry me and my family. And I want you all to know, regardless of what we may go through in life, 
Don't ever think this lady standing up here hold anything against neither one of you. I love all of you, my cousins, aunties, uncles, everybody. Just know, as life goes on, it don't pay to hate. Hate destroys all wounds. Walk with your heart open. And if you feel like it's not good to you, leave it alone. I love y'all, and thanks for being here. And now we will have the reading of the obituary by Kalita Vance or Dominique McCaskill. Hello, everyone. My name is Dominique McCaskill. I am Dorothy's youngest daughter. And um, just pray for me while I'm up here. <clears throat> Her story. Dorothy Vance was born on September 8, 1952 in Brinkley, Arkansas, to the union of the late Mr. Aaron Floyd Vance Sr and Amelia Julia Vance. She was the firstborn child of 11 children. Dorothy was baptized at Mount Olive Baptist Church in Monroe, Arkansas. She was baptized at an early age and full of joy in learning about her Lord and Savior. Upon migrating to Detroit, Michigan, she began attending Wyoming Avenue Church of Christ, attending for many years as time passed. In the year 2020, Dorothy went on to become a member of the Hebrew Assembly Chosen Seed. She was, <clears throat> excuse me, she was there with her daughter, myself, Dominique, <laughs> until the departing of this earth, earthly plane. Part of her educational training was obtaining her nursing degree. Dorothy had 10 siblings, five loving brothers, four beloved sisters, and one sister preceding her in death, Sheila Vance. Our Heavenly Father called Dorothy home March 16th, 2021. In memory, she leaves behind two beloved children, Gerald Copeland and Dominique McCaskill, widower, my husband, Amir McCaskill. Dorothy's remaining siblings to cherish are Aaron Vance Jr., Curtis Vance, Michael Vance, Antoine Vance, his wife Donna Vance, Reginald Vance, Darlene Vance, Kalitha Colette Vance, <laughs> Loretha Kill, Deborah Yetz, widower Stephen Yetz. Dorothy leaves behind to cherish a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and great nieces and nephews, and a host of family and friends. Thank you. And now is the time for remarks. We're asking that maximum of four people come up to speak, please, and for no more than two minutes so that we can keep the service moving smoothly. Thank you. Good afternoon, family and friends. Um, Antoine Vance, Dorothy's second youngest sibling. And uh, first of all, I hate cancer. Um, cancer has taken away two of the strongest women I've ever known in my life. My mother, Amelia Vance, and now my sister, Dorothy Vance. 
If cancer was a man, I'd kill it. I can't stand cancer, but that's a whole nother story. So my earliest fond memories of my sister Dorothy was when I was young, a baby. She used to carry me around like a doll. And I was born 10 pounds, 9 ounces. So I was a big baby, <laughs> which probably explains why she only grew to 5 feet, <laughs> you know. Um, even, even though she was small, she was not a slight person or a weak person. Dorothy lived life by her own rules, and she played it the way she wanted to. One of her frequent hangouts was downtown Detroit. And I remember as a kid, I was outside playing, and I see somebody I'm looking up the street at Finkel Avenue, and I see a figure walking towards the house. And I said, that looked like my sister. And she gets closer and closer. I said, that is Dorothy, but she's carrying something. And for you young kids, you may not understand what a 19-inch TV was <laughs> 30 years ago, but it's not the little flat screen. It's a big TV. And so she gets to the house. I say, sis, let me help you with that. I help her get the TV in the house. And uh, I ask, I say, and now she came from downtown on the bus with the TV. Um, and I say, where'd you get the TV from? And she said, uh, that nigga didn't pay me my money, so I took his TV. <laughs> it, it, that, that, was, that was my sister. She didn't, she didn't put up, she didn't put, she didn't put up with a lot. And, um, and you know, she was a beautiful chocolate baby who grew into a beautiful chocolate woman. And I'm proud of her. She lived life on her own terms. And I learned as I got older, I would not judge anything. She loved her family. And whenever she called it hit a lick, she brought it home. You know, so that's my sister. So right now, I know she's up there dancing with my father and my mother. And someday, if we're all lucky, we'll all be there by the grace of God. I'm going to go farther back than Brian did. Um, Black is beautiful, ain't it? Yeah. When Dor Dorothy beautiful? Yeah. <clears throat> she put a lot of smiles on people's faces. She turned a lot of guys' heads. She turned my brother head almost around. He still couldn't get it. She was so damn fast, <laughs> you know? But like I got to say this, uh, we did a lot together. I love her, I'm gonna miss her. It's hard, but uh, she going up, I don't know where I'm going, but wherever I go, and she there, I'm gonna ask for a transfer because I would like to see her again, you know. <laughs> Life is something that people change. A lot of people change, I change. But I don't know where I'm going. I had a bad life, a bad past, but I'm a man. So if I go down, I go, don't make me no difference. So I'm gonna try to get a transfer to see Dorothy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Deborah. Uh, I'm Anisha. Hey, y'all. Hey. To God be the glory. The saying in the Bible is, is that lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. Dorothy was one of those women that God did direct her path. God put her on a path of salvation. And I know that she is resting in his arms right now. I remember in 209 when my brother Aaron brought her to my home and said, here, you're going to have to take care because can't nobody deal with her. <laughs> <laughs> so my four children and my grandchildren, they all say, Mom, you got to get your sister. Go get your sister. She's sick. And it was just like a domino effect. Didn't neither one of them know anything. Each one of them called me. So I went and got my sister. And I'm going to say this. She was my tooth and my nail. That's my heart laying there. She taught me well. And I'm going to keep on honoring her. Because I do know that I'm going to see Dorothy again in heaven. Because God is holding her right now. At the age of 15, she wanted to sing. She had a chance to sing for Motown. So God got her in heaven right now singing. And her favorite song was 
My little light shine. This little light. This man. little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. So that's exactly what she's doing. She's up there singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. All right, y'all, we're going to let it shine. Let it Amen. Shine. Auntie, we love you. Yeah. We love you. I, 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 I hope, I wish you could hit it one time for me with the legs and the shoulders. And you can't, that's my favorite thing too. But I love you so much from your chocolate baby. She was my favorite person. I'm sorry, y'all. And every time I look at her, all I can hear is she used to call me her Lady Madame. So it's like last time I seen her, she was like, Lady Madame, I want to see you walk across that stage. This is my last year of high school. She was like, I want to see you graduate. And it's okay, she will. But thank y'all, I love all y'all. Okay. Yeah, tell this, let me, let me make my way up here. <laughs> Okie dokie. Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Vance, Dorothy's Vance's younger brother. As you can see, I have some challenges that my sister has helped me try to overcome. Our big sister. She was my friend. She was my protector. I'm going to tell you a few stories. I'm not, not about, I'm not about to get into my funny yet. I remember when I was young, and um, we were living on um, 16th of Buchanan. My sister would call the house. She said, Michael, did my check come? Now, we know what check that was, that welfare check. I say, sis, it hasn't come yet. She called back. Michael, did my check come? I said, yes, it did. Now, mama always told me, Michael, when the mail come, slide it under my door. So I would slide the mail under the door, and then when Dorothy's check came, I would reach my hand under the door and grab it back from under the door. I said, sis, I got your check. Because she depended on that check, and she depended on me to have that check when she came to the house. As my sister got older, um, she lost her teeth. And it was hard for her to communicate. <laughs> it was hard for her to communicate when she had teeth in her head. <laughs> and she would talk in incomplete sentences and we couldn't understand what she was saying. It went something like this, well, Michael, won't you? And then I, and I'm gonna go to app, and then when I come, <laughs> 
I say, Reggie, did you understand what she said? She, he said, no. She said something about going to the fight and see Muhammad Ali, and they're going to be fighting in the jungle, and then she's going to come back and see Jesus. I love her. I miss her. Truly. During her difficult times, I was there. I was at my sister's back and call. Because she was at my back and call. She was there for everybody. Dorothy gave her heart. And even if you didn't know her, she gave her heart to you. God gifted her with a heart of gold, and she shared it with everybody. So, my sister would call me and say, Michael, I need you to go to the store for me, and I need you to go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, and then I need you to go to the gas station. I said, okay, sis, I'm on my way. So when I get there, she ain't got her teeth in her head. And she looked like the black Popeye. A little bit older. Michael? I mean, you know what you're doing. I say, sis, what you said? I mean, you know what you're doing. I say, well, sis, I can't understand you. When you don't understand me, you've been knowing me long enough. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm going to do, Michael. And when you know, and when you, and when you know, please don't give me two bags of ice. And then when you need, I want you to give me uh, some Kentucky Fried Chicken. I said, you want me to get you some Kentucky Fried Chicken? She said, yeah, I want you to give me some Kentucky Fried Chicken. And then when, I want two ties, and then want uh, uh, two chicken wings. <laughs> I said, you want two breasts? She said, mm, mm, I want two chicken wings, and I want two ties. She said, I don't want no breast. I don't want no breast. I said, I got you, you don't want no breast. And then once you stop me, so I want you to give me. I want you to give me a coat. And, and then when you, and when you, I want you, I want you to give me two Lucy cigarettes. <laughs> I said, okay, sis. <laughs> I got you. On that note, I hope that I put a little bit of light on the subject, because my sister would not want us here sad, because she did not believe in pity parties. Even when I got depressed, she said, Michael, depression ain't gonna help you. You need to keep positivity in your life. <laughs> you gotta remain strong, Michael, and believe, and never give up. Because she said, brother, you may be on a walker now, but you will walk again. And on that note, God bless you all. I thank you all for being here. And to my big sister, my one and only, may you rest in peace. And now we're going to have Gerald Copeland come to the mic to read a scripture. Hello, family. That's immediate, extended, and global. Okay? I want to recite something from Luke. Luke chapter 7, verses 20 through 21 that goes like this. And when he, Yeshua, the Christ, was demanded of the Pharisees, asking when the, kingdom of, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered and said, the kingdom of the Most High is, this, comes not with observation, 
neither shall they say, lo here, nor lo there. But behold, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. And I'm gonna say this to the black family, immediate, extended, and global. We have no excuses. Black was the beginning. We are his chosen people. Regardless of what was instilled in you. I say we have the power to destroy our enemy's work globally, okay? And for that, I say to you, come out of anthropy through fear, okay? You have the power, the Christ is within you, and nothing will happen until we come unafraid. And to that I say be one, which means black first. Amen. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Good. Is this one of Okay. Chicky. Where's Sharon? Oh. I don't know if they can play our music. Your music? Yeah. Okay. The funeral home is supposed to play it. Right. It's the instrumental. It's the instrumental. What's up with that? Um, okay. <coughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> Y'all bear with me. I'm a. Uh, I'm nervous just because I got a lot of emotion going on. So bear with me. Oh yeah. You play it.
I'm gonna sit with the kids. And now we will have the eulogy by Dr. Aaron L. Vance, Jr. Once again, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to read Galatians 1.12 for your hearing. And it says by the Apostle Paul, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Now, should there be a title to this message on today, it would be a good work of Dorothy Vance. Now, Dorothy loved the word of the Most High. My sister, she loved truth. My darling sister, we grew up together for some time. And of course, as life would have it, we make our own choices in life. Now, I'm saying this to say this. When a child is in his mother's womb, he or her, they are developing, of course. However, they're developing a certain way. I say that because after Adam and Eve fell and lost their place in the Garden of Eden, they became outcasts. They was cast out. What was it about that tree of knowledge of good and evil that was so enticing, so seductive, until they had to literally disobey a direct order from their creator, the Most High. Now, they were surrounded by trees, and there's a meaning to that also, trees. Trees have a lot more meaning than we give trees credit for, by the way. But they had everything that they could want. All the fruit was theirs for the taking. Just don't eat of that tree. Now, the smartest thing as we know, because we're all Bible verse folks, was for them to eat of the tree of life. And now they could live forever. Why did the Most High put a fallen angel in the tree? call the tree of knowledge of good and evil as far as being in that environment. Satan, Lucifer, the fallen archangel. That was his tree. They made a bad choice. They didn't choose life, they chose death. And in every baby that's born, that baby comes in the, what they call the sin of iniquity. That baby is tainted from his father's seed. The father's seed is contaminated. Now, you'll love that baby. You'll grow up just adoring that child. But that child is missing a main ingredient. And that main ingredient is called life everlasting. Now, that child that we love so much is appointed to die because of sin 
of fallen nature. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Pray for me while I'm up here. Amen. I'm going to give you some revelation if you'll pray for me. Glory to God. So here we have the tree of good. Good thoughts, right thinking, circumspectly walking, integrity on one side. And on another side, we have a thing called evil at its core. All manner of deprivation comes by way of evil inside of this child. This child can do anything, be good or be bad. Am I right about it? Amen. Say amen, somebody. It's, it's all good. You raise your child how you want, but at the end of the day, it's good and evil in that child. Hallelujah. So what we have is choices. But when that child first comes out of the womb of that child's mother, they are innocent. They're pure. They don't understand that they just landed on a battlefield. They don't understand they just landed in a war zone. They don't understand that they came to do battle. They came to have war and win. They don't understand it. Who's teaching their children these days that they are on a battlefield and the battle is raging and the battle is not theirs but it's of the most high but you gotta know how to walk this walk correctly to win this fight of faith. Who's telling them that? So they come here and they live their life and they grow up after the world because that's all they see progressing. They see us born again believers acting just like them. So how can we make a difference when all we have is the world's attitude? We walk like them, we talk like them, we think like them. Where is the man and woman of faith who speaks the Most High's word boldly and it comes to pass. Why? Because the Most High will not allow his word to return void. Where is that essence of life that we're supposed to hold up that blood-stained banner and is not being held up? We're not doing a good job. Amen. And that's why judgment has come to the house of God. People are dying every day by the thousands, daily. Dying by the thousands. Why is that? Is it just because some man created it in a laboratory? I don't think so. It's because your prayers may have been in vain. You want on your post. Then the word tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Then it tells us we walk by faith, not by sight. Then it tells us that we are at war and the war is raging. Where do you stand in the battlefield of this war? Where is your mindset? I'm trying to slow down. I'm going to take my... I don't got... I can't slow down, but I'm going to try anyway, just for a minute. The Creator tried to tell you who He was. He tried to show you that you made just like Him. Not only in word, but in spirit and soul, he tried to share that with you, that you are a God on this planet. Why are we letting fallen angels who only have a demented, defunct soul make havoc out of us who have spirit of power and soul of power? The Christ came to die for our sins. He hung and bled and died and bore it all, shed his blood so that we may have a right to the tree of life. Now, inside of you is spirit. That's a mind all by itself. Inside of you is soul. That's a mind all by itself. Left, right, spirit, soul. I'm going to get a little deep on you. Male and female. What you got to know is this. 
The only thing the Most High can create, the only thing with all of his power, all of his majesty, all of his might, the only thing he can create is a male and a female. And he tried to share with you, that's who he is. Spirit, soul, male, female, here to do battle on this planet here to hold up that bloodstained banner and walk with integrity upon the planet and take back your authority that the enemy stole. Anytime Yeshua the Christ went to the bowels of hell and snatched the keys of death, hell, and the grave and came up with all victory, you got the same victory. Why aren't we walking in it? We're walking around afraid and scared, don't know what the next move is, rather to do anything and take anything because they say so. Where is the common sense anymore? Do you hear from the Creator or are you just imagining you hear? Another thing, Ephesians 6 and 12. The word says, we are to cast down every imagination because mind of spirit and soul is imagination. That's all you got going forth is thoughts. We are to cast down every imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High and bring into captivity Every thought that's not like him unto the obedience of the Most High. So where are we these days? We go in, we go out. Nothing's changed. 20 years later, 30 years later, 40 years later, 50 years later, and nothing has changed. The beat goes on. Death, here you come. But where did you go in that death? Because your soul is responsible. Even John, in the, in the book of John, it says the spirit goes back to the giver, the conscience. But the conscience, the soul of man, where does it go? Hell is real. And a lot of people are busting it wide open. Here today, gone tomorrow. Here today, gone today. Busting hell wide open. Life is not promised to you. It never was because you fell from grace. But thank the Most High, thank the Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, that now grace much more abounds. Hallelujah. Mercy much more abounds. So where are we now? 2021. Where are we now? What will we do to make a difference? How will our children understand that we are somebody? Our creator made us that way. We are somebody. We're not a fearful people. He gave us love, power, and a sound mind. Why aren't we using it? If you hate your brother, if you hate your sister, John 8:44 says you got another father. And that father is a liar and a murderer. And that father, that fallen angel, fell, and his soul is in hell and shall stay there. Although he rules in the second heaven, his soul is in hell because he can't go back to his first estate. You know, people gamble all the time, right? The first gamble didn't occur on the earth. The first gamble occurred in heaven. Lucifer, the bright morning star, lost his position, spirit went back to the giver, soul went out of heaven's territory. Now he dwells in the second phase of heaven. Over you, puppeteering, controlling your mind, telling you what to do and how to do it. Then he influenced Eve in the Garden of Eden, where'd he go? To the soul first. To the one that he had a thought he could win. And guess what, he did, because she took the forbidden fruit and bit into it. Now, there was a blood transfusion to occur. Oh, yes it was. I'm gonna show you, kind of like this. The blood transfusion occurred because when you bite on this, isn't there juice that come out of here? Is Stay in, the, stay in the spirit, brothers, sisters. You're going to miss it. It's always a carnal mind somewhere. Stay in the spirit. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. 
but you're going to miss it. And that is not good because you're going to be held responsible for today's word coming at you because everything is being recorded. You're not just here by chance. You're not just here for show or fashion. You got an appointment. You got a major appointment. And that appointment is going to determine whether you did good and you got a good record showing that you're good, I'll wage your bad, or you're bad, I'll wage your good. Juice comes out of here. That's the life of this fruit, juice. When Eve bit, juice came out of it, the soul of man. Genesis 1, 27, 28, Genesis 5, 5. It, it's a story, but it's a beautiful story. If you can see beyond what you've gotten so far. You've got to have revelation. And that, call, that comes from an apostolic anointing. You've got to have the anointing. It didn't do any good when she bit because nothing changed, but the devil was waiting on Adam to partake. The spirit. They once walked in the garden all by themselves and fellowship together, spirit and soul inside of Eve. But now they were separated, and they can make choices of their own, separate, with separate bodies. That's revelation. You may not get it, but it's still revelation. When Adam bit that fruit, what happened? He drank the blood. And then what happened? He fell, and he knew they had fallen. And what happened? Because the blood transfusion was unto sin, and death, and hell. Give God some praise, somebody. Give God some praise. He deserves it. You might not get it now, but you'll get it later. <coughs> A blood transfusion, excuse me, occurred. And that's why Jesus, Yeshua the Christ, had to go to the cross and shed his innocent blood so that we may have a right to the tree of life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, if we got all power has been given to us, that's what the words say, why are we walking around and letting the world dictate to us? Where is, the, where is your own church of collective bodies of people that are assembled to do great works upon the earth? Because the enemy knows your plan, and he simply wreaks havoc on you before the plan can be fulfilled. That's why you got to walk in the spirit at all times and see what the plan is so you can outwit that demonic force thinking. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory. It's 1.30 already. <laughs> okay. One more thing I'm going to share just briefly because children are here on a battlefield and they don't even know it. They think all they got to do is do like the secular people do, and they are right. That's the world. You can't carry that stuff with you when you leave here. If you, I can go many places. But let me, let me just do this, because I know it's time to go. Trees. Trees. Trees have a deeper meaning than you think. For instance, since I'm not going to bring anybody up here, I'm going to show you this one. I guess I am going to bring somebody up there, right quick, if they don't mind, humbling themselves. Anybody tall, come up, brother, if you don't mind, come up here for a minute. All right, come up here. Appreciate it. I'm going to do it right quick, then we're going to get out of here. We've got to commit the body to the ground. Our sister Dorothy. All right, now, brother, stand just like that. Stand, stand just like this. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to show you something. This is what I'm trying to show you. Put your feet together. Okay? Now. Our creator was in the bush on the book of Exodus when Moses turned around and looked and finally looked and saw the bush was burning mm -hmm. and it wouldn't go out. That's a symbol of a tree. Hallelujah. Now, you want to see a tree? Stretch your hands out. All right. Now, with that tree, bend them a little bit. Take them up, bend them. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. Take your hand. Do them like this, and open wide. O open each hand. Isn't that a root? Yeah. Isn't that a trunk? Yeah. Isn't that limbs where a bird can sit? Aren't these branches? They can sit yeah. there too if they want. And even if they 
One, they can sit on the nest. They can make a nest. That's a tree. We are walking trees. Let me see you walk back to your seat, brother. I'm going to show you a walking tree. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Now, that tree walks and speaks the word, doesn't he? He walks and speaks the word. So if he walks and speaks the word, don't you walk and speak the word? Huh? Now, let me show you the cross. Then I'll let him go. I almost missed that part. Stretch your hands out again. Put your feet together. That don't look like a cross? That's not a cross? Hallelujah. Give God some praise, somebody. Give God some praise. You do it, brother. Appreciate that. Give God some praise. Glory to God. See, when Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, created you in his image and his likeness by way of the Father, he gave you all that he had. He didn't miss anything. When he breathed the breath of life into Adam and into Eve, he breathed spirit. He breathed soul into you. Now, we got to go. I want to show you the other parts, but amen. We're, we're, we're good for now. Give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. You're end it. All right. We'll ask the Paul Bear, I mean, the uh, procession to come up and close the coffin, please. If you're coming to view, can you please go back to your seat? We are still in service. Come view and please go back to your seat.
And if you're coming, can you come quietly, please? We're still in service, family. We are still in service. If I could have your attention, please. If I could have your attention, please. So that we can go out in a respectable way. We do need the center aisle cleared. We do need the center aisle cleared. There is a reception. The uh, repass is going to be at 15501 Kentville, Detroit, between Finkel and Midland, right after we commit the body to the, to the ground at Elmwood Cemetery. So. 15501 Kenfield Street will be the repast. Amen. At this time, we need some people to come to the center aisle to bear flowers. We need people to come to the center aisle. If you are coming to bear flowers, please bring your belongings with you. If you're not coming to bear flowers, we do need the center aisle clear. Flower bears only to the center aisle. Gentlemen serving as pallbearers, could you please come forward? 
come to my right, your left at this time, the gentleman serving as pallbearers. Come forward to my right, your left at this time. Two more people to bear flowers, two more people to bear flowers. Amen. Now listen, listen. As we get ready to go out, our ministers will go first. Paul Bears will come second. Then we will bring the casket out. The family will proceed out after the casket. And then we'll start from the front and work our way to the back. We need four more gentlemen to serve as Paul Bears. One, two, three. One more person. One more person. Amen. We need the center aisle cleared and may we all rise. May we all rise. Our ministers, receive our ministers as they come. You are where I am. I want to be where you are. Because you are where I am. from the back Family members After the family has come into the aisle and passed your row, you may proceed right on behind them Oh my God. 